You know, sometimes when we end the podcast, I make it a point to mention Teespring because I say, you know, YouTube isn't really a viable source of income. No, it is not. (laughs) And Patreon isn't always reliable. Well, make that a double, because <laughs> oh, shit's, no. shit's getting scary out here. And I'm just going to say, as two folks who rode that blip train till the wheels fell off, we know what it's like when things look too good to be true, and just over a couple years' time, that veil starts to slip, the paint starts to crack, and we're starting to see that a little bit with Patreon, so... I'm going to go ahead and reiterate that uh, if you want to give us a little bit of extra cash on Patreon... Why, you can. Especially since it looks like we might be getting even less of a cut than we're uh, used to. And Teespring is always there if you want to grab any lovely merch. While we're doing our little plugs, you know, uh, I want to talk about uh, Station Head, actually. Uh, This week's albums, both of them I listened to on Station Head as sort of like a, hey, listen along with me. And, you know, I kind of like... We were just sort of like talking about the songs in real time in the chat box, so... That's fucking nifty as shit. I like that. I- I'm really trying to use the app in like a creative way. Like, I-, I don't want it to just be like I'm just playing like random songs. I want it to be like have shows, you know what I mean? It's the Going Off Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. Oh, we started off with our ads. Look at that. Our calls to action. A lot of podcasts do that. Like, <laughs> yeah, like that's the- true. They front load the podcast with the plugs. Mm-hmm. Because... No one's going to be listening at the end. If anyone in the comments, if you'd like to let us know, do you actually listen past (laughs) the, and I'm rap crit, like, if you listen that far and you actually get to the end, please let us know. I think part of, honestly, the show is, like, saying ridiculous shit at the tail end just to see if people, like, (laughs) stick around. Earlier, you you were saying Twitter is for the hardcore followers. Yeah, the last ten seconds of the podcast (laughs) are for the hardcore, the fucking diehards. You know, it'd be funny if, like, there was someone who, like, you know, is listening right now, and they're like, wait, there's been something at the end every time? Like, you know, it's like finding out there's an end skit at the end of, like, Rick and Morty and shit, you know? Like, what?! I didn't know this whole time. I thought they were still saying suck a dick. (laughs) What have I been missing? (laughs) Like the fucking chalkboard bit on the Simpsons, like that little extra bit of effort they put in. I appreciate that. And uh, speaking of effort, boy, oh boy. Or or the lack thereof. (laughs) Oh, at least the lack of enthusiasm. Enthusiasms, enthusiasms. (laughs) Enthusiasms. Enthusiasm. Dude, immediately. Okay, so we got to talk about Super Bowl halftime show. I really don't care about the game or even the ads at this point. Like, no. I didn't hear anyone even talking about them. I didn't oh, even see anything. I did. Dude. Oh, okay. Real quick, we got to talk about the controversy. Oh, oh, because oh, there's always one, right? So there were two major Bud Light ads. For a while now, Bud Light have been kind of presenting these ads in this realm of, like, this medieval lore. The whole dilly-dilly thing. I don't know what that is. I- I'm really out of the loop. But anyway, there's a Bud Light knight. He's in a suit of armor, and he looks like like one of those aluminum bottle Bud Lights. And he's in a joust, and he gets knocked the fuck off his horse. And then you see that, holy shit, it's the zombie mountain from Game of Thrones! That knocked him off his horse. And then the fucking dragons come in and they light everything on fire. And it's a cross ad for Bud Light and the final season of Game of Thrones. And it's pretty sick because you don't see it coming. And it's like, wow, that's pretty neat. That's not the one that people are pissed off about, though. Uh, I was about to say, I was like, oh, oh, did it like spoil something? The one that got him pissed off was they're at the Bud Light castle. My king, this corn syrup was just delivered. That's not ours. We don't brew Bud Light with corn syrup. Miller Light uses corn syrup. Let us take it to them at once. We received your corn syrup by mistake. That's not our corn syrup. We received our shipment this morning. You're joking. Try the Coors Light Castle. They also use corn syrup. Is this corn syrup yours? Well, well, well. Looks like the corn syrup has come home to be brewed. <laughs> To be clear, we brew Coors Light with corn syrup. Ah, Simpsons level writing here, guys. Yeah, so the next day, corn farmers 
are pouring their Bud Lights down the sink. Is th- is that it? I, I guess we got the Gillette ad out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, although that probably would have been a really good Super Bowl ad. It's like a two-minute thing. Maybe it was too expensive for Gillette. Darren, we have talked about the Super Bowl halftime shows. Mm. I think every year I since so, we yeah. started this podcast, we talked about it's it every year. It was... Beyonce, Coldplay, and Bruno Mars. Great year, great year. Then we had Lady Gaga, still, in my opinion, one of the best I've seen. Then there was, like, Justin Timberlake, I think, was after that. That was last year, right? The white male mediocrity train just keeps on trucking. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) Like, come on, can we at least get some, like, fresh white dudes out here? You know what I mean? Like, y'all not representing right now, NFL. Like, there's some white guys that can sing and perform. You you know that, right? Like, is this what the mainstream, like, can only present to us right now? You know? It's either Maroon 5 or Imagine Dragons, and you can keep them both. Wow. And the only reason Maroon 5 matters is just because they've been around longer. And they've got the Cardi B hit out right now. Oh, my God, dude. I have been, like, I, I was thinking about saying something about it, but, like, I honestly got to the point where I was just like, I just don't care enough about this song to say anything, but it really is annoying as shit. And I think we all know that. Like, Cardi B, like, Cardi B on that song is doing that song a favor, (laughs) obviously. Because otherwise, it's just... And the fucking squeaking of the guitar strings. Lifeless. (laughs) Oh, my God. And then to see it alive. Oh, God. It just hurt. It was just like, oh no, it's even worse live, oh no. And because they already asked Cardi if she would do the halftime show, and she was like, no, out of respect for Colin Kaepernick, it was like, well, okay, uh, I guess we're just gonna have you guys do all the heavy lifting on your own, good luck with that one. I guess we gotta fill our uh, black person quota with uh, with a gospel singer. What the fuck was that? Yeah, and like, And it was so unearned, it was just like... <laughs> Where is this coming from? Why is she singing so intensely? We're not having a God moment. It's, it's fucking girls like you. Like, what? what is this? You know? Oh, I was a mo. Oh, his voice, bro. <laughs> I couldn't Dude. take it. As reedy and clarinet-like as his voice is, at least it still sounds like his voice. Travis Scott sounded like someone just fucking, like, it legit seemed like, you know, uh, you've heard the song Sicko Mode. You heard what it sounds like, right? It's inescapable, yes. <laughs> so it's like, you'd think he would know what it sounds like, right? <laughs> <laughs> he never listens to his own shit. <laughs> he hates the sound of his own voice. He Dude, can't do it. what if it really is just like, it's all work and no pleasure? Like, <laughs> it's just like, look, I did the vocals. You guys put the, vo- uh, the uh, auto-tune on it to make it work. I'm going to go fuck some more bitches for inspiration. You know what I mean? Do like, whatever it's like- it is you boys do. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> We gotta backtrack a little if we're talking about <laughs> boys. So, I saw someone on Twitter go, what do you want to see from the Maroon 5 Super Bowl halftime show? Todd's tweet was like, nothing they can give me. <laughs> exactly. An apology. <laughs> <laughs> an, an upfront apology. <laughs> um, and I tweeted and said, uh, if they play the album Songs About Jane in its entirety. Because I will die on that hill. That song's about Jane is still, even having been released in like 2003, it fucking stands up. It's a solid album. All the songs are good. So what do they do? They fucking start with Harder to Breathe. And I'm like, oh shit. Right? Oh my god. Right? They're actually playing a song from (laughs) Songs About Jane. And then it's just met with the most flat (laughs) <laughs> Lifeless. You came to chime in me, wonder why I'm even here. You stuff with this and I was seeing this from all I could. It's the Super Bowl. This is the first song. You can't be blown up at the first song, my guy. Like, was the energy in the arena so goddamn lacking? That there was nothing to fucking build off of, nothing to nothing to bounce back of. I remember seeing the cell phone footage during Justin Timberlake's performance that the crowd was like fucking dead. Was that the same thing here? Like, man, he looked like he'd rather be anywhere else 
than the Super Bowl. I'm saying your boy had the Surge Tankian face on. <laughs> Serious <laughs> Tanky and performing in 2018 in the face looking ass. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Dude, at the top of this show, it was like the first, like as soon as he started singing, that's the face he put off for the Super Bowl? The Super Bowl? You know how many people are watching though, right? Maybe it's because he knows that they were like, the 12th choice. Uh, <laughs> Adam Levine, he has no groove. He has no stage presence. What the fuck is this shit? I'm watching this dude clean cut. He's got the tattoos. It's all worked out and shit. You know, he's taking off his shirt at the end of the show and shit. In a desperate attempt to win oh, the crowd over, so he takes obvious. his shirt off. <laughs> then you got this lifeless, soulless performance. And then at the very end, it's like, okay, cool, I gotta wrap it up with moves like Jagger, which I absolutely do not have. <laughs> oh my god! When he does that little side step to step, side to side thing, and that's all he had. Oh, I gotta oh. fucking pop my hip out. I gotta fucking. I gotta. Oh I gotta god. dry hump the air a little bit. Funny thing was, I first saw footage on mute when I was at a restaurant, and I just saw Travis Scott come out, and like on mute. Travis Scott looked like he owned the whole fucking performance. Like, just because the way he was moving around and stuff. But then, you know, as soon as you so, soon as you turn that volume up, it's like, oh, oh okay, this isn't working. <laughs> Two, four hour lockdown. We made no moves. Now it's four with you. And I'm back up popping with the crew. I just made it in. Chase remixes is probably like Jumbo Juice. I think you mean when you saw Travis Scott ride a weird CG comet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I thought it was just funny how obviously corny it was. It was just like, look, all right, this is this is network television. You <laughs> so there was a petition to, to either get Maroon 5 to play or show Sweet Victory from SpongeBob. Dude, what a cock tease. What you get is like five seconds or so introducing uh, Sicko Mode. And I thought the way they used it actually wasn't that bad. But I think because people expected so much. But what the fuck did you really think they were going to do? Play the whole damn song? I mean, it would have been a funny gag. Like, Spongebob is huge for the nostalgia factor and just the fact that it's huge. And, you know, it is playing at a Super Bowl. You're not going to be talking about Maroon 5 on Monday morning. So you might as well have something. You know what I mean? Like, oh, isn't it crazy that they went out and, and actually used that footage? And then you saw Squidward and he's like, and now someone who needs no introduction. You know, Spongebob. Bob does his silly dance that he did in the Band Geeks episode. Like Squidward just goes like, oh, oh SpongeBob, not you. I was introducing <laughs> Travis Scott. <laughs> oh. It made as much sense in that context as the SpongeBob clip at the end of that gorilla's music video. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> SpongeBob is just being used by like I feel like SpongeBob is just being used by people like anytime it's someone like in a higher up position like they don't 100% what people are, get what people are doing with SpongeBob so they're just like I, I used a clip that's what y'all like right what? <laughs> remember that scene remember that scene where the like nematodes eat the, the houses maybe we show a clip of that you guys like <laughs> stuff like that right oh 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 I think it was funny within the first uh, 40 seconds. Uh, Adam Levine was literally overshadowed by an actual shadow. Like, oh shit, <laughs> he was, was he? performing, and you saw him like looking up at something, and then like all of a sudden his face was like slightly darkened for a while. And I was like, what's going on? <laughs> the thing about like Adam Levine's voice, it was really revealed whenever he would like shout. Hello! It sounded like he was always slightly too far away from the mic. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like that type of voice, you, you need to have that that Axl Rose quality to it. You know what I yeah. mean? But his sounds like 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 a, a timid teacher that's like trying to get your attention in class. You know, like hey guys, uh, the substitute. You know, yeah, exactly, the substitute. Now, overall, I'd say Maroon Five performing at the halftime show was like the Simpsons movie, just a few <laughs> years too late. <laughs> like Straight no one really asked for it. 
<laughs> it would have been great like 10, 20 years ago, but now it's like, what the fuck ever, Yo, man? Who cares? Dude, I, you know I've been watching The Simpsons, right? Yeah, of course. So I, I, I've been, um, <clears throat> you know, when I was young, was huge on it. Me and my family used to watch it all the time. Oh, yeah, me too. But, you know, as I got into like... Uh, you know, early tweens or whatever. You know, it just kind of fell off because Family Guy kind of got big at the time. But then it got yeah. canceled. But it was kind of like, hey, but, you know, Family Guy is still kind of like that edgy show. But then it came back and it kind of got horrible. You know? Oh, yeah. I think that was around the time when the Simpsons movie came out. Because I remember being like, oh, Simpsons movie. You know, you know, maybe I should give them a chance again. You know what I mean? Like, the whole reason I fell out with them was because, you know, it always felt like they were way too gingerly with, like, you know, celebrities and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, I think it was, like, the 50 Cent episode I watched where it was just, like, they didn't do any jokes at all. And 50 Cent can't act. And so it was just not fun. You know what I mean? You know, I, I was actually thinking about that recently, about when the turning point for me was. Because, yeah, I was in the exact same boat as you. I was watching The Simpsons a lot back in the day. And because I'm a few years older i was seeing a lot of that shit when it fucking like premiered yeah see see I, yeah i was getting the kickback because because you know i watched it when i was really young so i was kind of going back at first and seeing like you know all shit i didn't get at first you know what i mean so at this point though sim i haven't watched simpsons almost twice as long as i did <laughs> like i i'm a fan of up to like season 10 or 11 yeah, that's about what people say, yeah. And it's into, like, almost 30 or around there. And I was trying to think of what episode it was for me that I was like, no, nope, I, I think this is where I'm checking out. I think it was episode 300 where I want to say it was Blink-182 and Tony Hawk. I, you see what I'm saying? Like, and it was probably just some wow, safe Wow, Tony ass. Hawk? What are you doing in Springfield? Like, all right. This is where I get off. <laughs> but let me let me remember, because I I believe it was the 50 Cent episode. Where I don't I even stopped remember watching. that. Like, <laughs> I, I remember that, that being the last time I wanted to pay attention. That was, by the way, the uh, 11th episode of the 14th season. Okay. Okay, that's funny. I just looked up which episode it was. Um, the episode I'm thinking about is from the 16th season. So I hung out on a little longer. A little longer. <laughs> <laughs> in 2005. Yup, that was about the time. And and even even me at that age, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to watch Futurama. I'm just going to watch reruns of Futurama. How about that? <laughs> I switched over to Family Guy, as I remember. And even that, after a while, I was like... This isn't funny anymore. And I and I know when I fucking turned the page on Family Guy too. Mm. It was the fucking Conway Twitty episode. Oh my god. Where they kept showing the I was like, no. Dude, I couldn't fucking take it. I think I was around that time too. It was a little bit it was either around that one or it was some episode where they kept making fun of Meg. It was either that episode or another episode where it was like she needs to be the lightning rod for everyone's way. Yeah, they've had, like, multiple episodes ripping on her, and it's just like, why do you think we hate her? We just didn't care about her because you guys didn't write her well. When was the uh, Star Wars episodes? I think that was it. That was a few years after I tuned out. That was, like, mid-2000s, I want to say. Maybe, no, see, yeah. maybe, like, 2009. I gave shows a chance well past the time they deserved it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, like, when it got to that point, like, I remember I was in, um... I was in, like, my dorms or something like that, and I remember people watching it on TV, and I'm coming in because I'm like, hey, family guy, you know, you know, they're making a joke on a on a movie. Like, oh, that'd be fun to do, like, them but, like, parody for a whole movie. That's cool. You know, most parodies kind of suck right now. So, you know, it'd be nice to see them do it. And then it was just like, all you're doing is just referencing directly these things, and you're not making jokes about them. You're just imitating it. I'd say a good rule of thumb is if Mel Brooks couldn't do a funny full-length star wars parody <laughs> seth mcfarland can't <laughs> and i may be oh, are you overstepping your boundaries i i might be by saying that but fucking space balls sucks so bad space that movie's balls awful. is 
the, <clears throat> the best Mel Brooks movie. I will not hear it. He got better in the 90s. I fuck no. <laughs> History of the World Part 1 is dirt compared. <laughs> that I fucking, won't stand for it. Whatever the hell that vampire movie was. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Dracula dead and loving it. Dude, okay. Like, oh. <laughs> yo, we grew up on Mel Brooks movies, straight up and down. But these are, yeah. the, ones, these are the ones we grew up on. Uh, Blazing Saddles, of course. Uh, Young Frankenstein. Like, my mom had Spaceballs. So we actually watched that one a lot. <laughs> oh. So... I do kind of love it. <laughs> Again, if it has some sentimental value, I, yeah, I yeah. get it. You know, I can't fault you for that. If you're living in a bubble and you haven't got a prayer, do -do -do -do, then you better watch your ass because we're going to steal your air. <laughs> like, it's so over dramatic. <laughs> um, and then, uh, did you ever see High Anxiety? No, I've heard of that, though. I haven't seen it. Yeah, that was another one I remember being one Is of the really good, good ones. That one in Silent Movie. And I think that was, uh, oh, and then what's the one where he becomes a homeless guy? Man, I, yeah, I'm not nearly as well versed uh, in Mel Brooks. I was way bigger into Monty Python movies. Ah, okay, okay. See, I got into that them a little later. Shit. I was watching Mel Brooks movies, and then I remember getting into high school, and, like, everyone was into, like, Monty Python, and I remember being like, okay, well, shit, I gotta catch up with <laughs> like I you gotta know? catch up with this thing from the late 70s. Well, because the, the only thing I had ever seen was, and now for something completely different, because they used to play that one on, like, Stars a lot, or oh, whatever the fuck shit. it was, you know what I mean? That's right. I completely forgot about that movie. It was basically like a movie of skits. Yeah, and it's like, you know, well, Monty Python is in high demand. Maybe we can't get the show, but we can get basically the show, the movie. Molly and I discussed the movie uh, Meaning of Life because I used to watch that one actually the most mm. of any of them. And only until recently did I really, like, did it dawn on me that it's one of those movies that, like, it has funny parts Mm -hmm. But overall, that movie kind of sucks. <laughs> like, there's moments of brilliance in there, but boy, oh boy, you gotta wade through a lot of boring shit. I think the the apex of Monty Python's films is the life of Brian. Because I remember when I saw it for the first time, I, I didn't know the difference between the life of Brian and the Holy Grail at the time. And so I was just like, oh, well, you know, all right, it, it's all good. And I remember, like, loving it. And then when I did see the, the Holy Grail, I remember being like, well, yeah, there's a lot of funny, silly moments, but, like, Life of Brian is genius, though. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't just, this is a funny, silly comedy. It's like, this is, like, really good satire. <laughs> Life stinks. That's what it was. <laughs> this movie in 1991 where Mel Brooks is, like, this really rich guy, and he makes a bet to become poor with uh, with Jeffrey Tambor. And he's like, you know, uh, if you can handle living on the streets poor for like a month, you know, you, you get to have such and such property. He ends up going to a, like a hospital and getting injected, you know, cause it's like, he looks like a poor homeless person. They're like, oh, he's probably addled with drugs, you know, get him 500 cc's of da 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 da. And he's like really getting high and he's just like, no, no, don't, don't do it again. Cause like the doctor keeps coming around and like, you know, I guess it's supposed to be commentary about how the doctors don't care about their patients or whatever. And he keeps yeah. going like, oh, look at this guy. Uh, he needs 500 cc's of this. Uh, get it to him step. And he's just like, no, no, stop. And they keep injecting him with drugs. And eventually he's just like, this is not fair. Life stinks. Life stinks, and it, like it, it, it's in this room with a whole bunch of other patients that are all doped up, and, and one guy just goes like, "Yeah, he's right. Life stinks," and then everyone just starts chanting, "Life stinks." That sounds so sad. You're right. That doesn't sound funny at all. <laughs> that I think it's because horrible. I know. I as I'm describing it. It's so <laughs> No, you know, they just keep coming by. They just keep pumping up, and he's pleading. He's begging. <laughs> he's begging for them to stop. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that that bell. <laughs> that there. cut up. Well, and then, the, oh, Robin Hood Men in Tights. Well, oh, I forgot about that one. One of Dave somehow. Chappelle's first roles. I remember liking that movie. The thing that I like about Mel Brooks movies is that for most of my life, I never saw the movies that Mel Brooks was parodying. 
Oh, I mean, especially with Blazing Saddles. Like, you think I was about to watch a fucking Western? <laughs> exactly! Fuck that! <laughs> the first of two Patreon-requested album reviews this week was requested by Dr. Goatman, who requested Rising Down by The Roots, their 2008 album. Darren, what are your thoughts on The Roots? Um, you know, I like The Roots. I especially like Black Thought. I like Questlove. I like them... You know, I like their musicianship and what they bring to hip hop on that front. And I think that that's their lifeblood, the musicianship, right? Yeah. Especially them getting the gig with um, Fallon. They're forever in the pantheon. Like, they don't even need hits anymore. Like, they got it now. They are valuable to hip hop because of their mainstreamization of what hip hop could be. Now, there is the sort of respectability of like, oh, I listen to The Roots because they're a real band. You know what I mean? Like, there was that sort of stigma, but it's just like, I mean, but they're still good. So, you know, you can't even be like, uh, that's the only reason people are giving them credit. It's like, no, they're not slouches. But I personally have never been like, you know, who is my favorite favorite? The MCs from The Roots. You know what I mean? And like Black Thought is the is the closest who comes to it, and like he'll hit you with some ill shit, some shit that's just like that, may, like that Lupe Fiasco type of. I want to fucking go back and read what he's talking about because this is insane. But he doesn't do that all the time. I feel like there's kind of like the reputation of him being that because he does do it at times. But it's just like there's a lot of times where he doesn't, and then there's other times where he like puts on the sort of rapidy rap style when it's like kind of not appropriate and feels kind of weird and we'll get into that that's why i wanted to throw it over to you first because i was curious because if i had to review this album in less than 10 words i would say rising down by the roots is okay yeah i gave it a three it is that's uh, exactly where i was it is pretty fucking average and you're right musicianship is definitely where the songs shine most of the time. Uh, Black Thought does step ahead of the others in most of the cases. Um, there was one or two times where I thought the other guys really uh, kind of held their own. Definitely uh, Greg Porn. Greg motherfucking Porn on which track was it? Singing Man. His whole verse is like from the point of view of like a, like a would-be serial killer. Yeah. Which, according to Genius, it says it's supposedly about the Virginia Tech shooter, but it could honestly be about any shooter. The thing about that song is that the chorus doesn't make any sense. In this. <laughs> oh, just, okay. Sing me a song, sing it, man. And it's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> what does this have to do with anything else? I was so confused. I was like, is there something I'm not getting right now? That's what it was. The second verse was about, like, being a child soldier or something like that. And, like, Uganda oh, or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. And then the third verse is about, like, some vague world-ending event. But it was kind of weirdly told. Like, I wasn't sure if he was supposed to be the good guy or the bad guy or what the perspective was supposed to be. I don't know. Maybe there's just a reputation that the Roots have for being, like, a deep band and then just sort of hearing this stuff, and it's just like, oh, well, I mean, you know. Not not really. Yeah, uh, Get Busy, uh, that was the one. And it was early on in the album, too, where it was kind of like, you know, uh, representing for Philly, and let's get two other Philly rappers that are kind of lackluster lyrically. I mean, no one talks about Petey Crack being the best MC. No one argues that even out of, like, the best of, you know, the Rockefeller camp. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Maybe if, if y'all heard differently, uh, but and, and his very first lines are like, "Now on your so, <laughs> PD crack." Now, now, I guess like hindsight just makes it look worse. But it's just like PD crack. Somebody wasn't even really that big back then, and definitely isn't really that much star power now. He's starting off his verse by like, "Now on your mark, get set, go cop everything you heard by PD crack." <laughs> I was just like, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. <laughs> and you are not cool enough to make that work. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> look, I will say, Get Busy, and it didn't really have much to compare it to, but comparing it to Rising Down, it was a better song than Rising Down. Yeah, yeah. Um, but 
Can we just start with the fucking powwow? Oh, <laughs> I almost forgot. Was I supposed to be able to pick up on what the fuck was happening in the powwow? I think, I think, like, after a while when it was doing, like, the cuts uh, quicker and quicker, I was just like, okay, I don't think I'm supposed to know what's happening. I think it's just supposed to sound like fucking confusion and anger. And I was just like, is this... Okay, maybe this is like preparing you for the album. But then when you listen all the way to the end of the album, it was just like uh, one of the guys leaves. There's just like one long message at the end, and he's just like, "Yeah, so um, just want to let you know, you know, we kind of get angry sometimes, but you know, we're just working on the music. We just want to make sure." To, so like, I'm thinking that they put that up there to be like some sort of message about you know what they're doing on the album. It's just like I think they're just like really mad at the label. And they just put that there. It has nothing to do with what's happening on the album. At the very beginning, it says, like, okay, so this is supposed to take place in 1994? Yeah. According to the narrator. And then it goes into this conversation where it's like, look, all I'm saying is, you know, you might be better off on your own label. Because, and then, like, then randomly, people just start screaming. And then there's another person who picks up the phone and then, then they'll get excited. It's like, okay, look, we, we have a witness. We have a witness to this conversation. Yeah. Another person listening. And then it just, like, cuts off super abruptly. So what? Is the album going to be about, like, frustration with it? No. Yeah, that's is the thing. Is it going to be about the record label? N- no, not really. The music industry? No, not really. <laughs> like, we got Get Busy, which is kind of like a throwback old school joint. It's got the cool... Uh, samples and the scratching over the chorus and it overall just kind of has like a feel of the lyrics and the flow just kind of sounds throwback but then you got these two tracks back to back oh this is fuck the internet pd crack (laughs) and then there's the other part um they call it downloading i call it downsizing like what the (laughs) hell are y'all these, talking about these, this is 2008 yeah and you coming at me with these 2003 level of understanding of technology like stop all the downloading he reminded me of uh do you remember the 90s george carlin specials uh yeah i've been uplinked and downloaded i've been inputted and outsourced i know the upside of downsizing i know the downside of upgrading i'm a high-tech low life a cutting-edge state-of-the-art bi-coastal multitasker and i can give you a gigabyte in a nanosecond at 15 which according to genius is speculating that that's how old black thought is recording the verse he doesn't sound 15 though he sounds like like he'd be older unless he just sounded like that at 15 which i mean good for him but it's like this tape recorded freestyle verse. What I thought was cool was the very next track is again just Black Thought, but it's 75 bars of just him and it kind of paints the picture of here's how he evolved as an MC since it's like okay, I I, I like that storytelling, but then 75 bars just again feels like a freestyle and it's it doesn't really do anything i gotta say the first like about 16 bars weren't that great they were just doing you know uh, a race scared niggas them snake head niggas they take care niggas they don't break bread with, and it's just like the sort of one one syllable rhyme and then the n-word and one syllable rhyme and, you know what i mean like there For was one a part, lot of it, yeah. There's one part where he goes, niggas make dead niggas and hate black niggas, brown niggas, high yellow niggas, and them red niggas. Like, um, okay, yeah. so the rhyme would have been black niggas and red niggas. This guy is supposed to be like this dope rapper, and you know, people are always, you know, what, what's the joke with Lil Wayne? I'm sure you've all seen the meme. Uh, good thing nigga rhymes with nigga, this rap shit would be hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, silly mm-hmm. mainstream rapper Lil Wayne. Not like The Roots, who would never do such a thing. You know what I mean? It was just kind of yeah, like. Yeah, I think that's the misconception. A lot of people do that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like part of my job is, as critics, right, is to dispel this notion of, like, you know, if it's older, it's automatically better. If it's newer, it sucks. Or even the opposite. You know what I mean? Like, if it's older, it's like that. No. Let's actually look at the fucking material. I also kind of hate the idea of, like, people going, like, you know, if you give an artist that you do like, like, a bad rating or something like that, people get down on you for that. Like, oh, you don't love that artist? I swear to God, dude. One time I came across a super fan of Eminem, bro. You say you're a big fan of Eminem, but you gave his album, you know, a uh, bad score. And I was just like... Yeah, you should be able to create to get your favorite artist. It was just like, well, if you really love your artist, you shouldn't be doing that. I was like, 
are you real? Do you exist? What's going on right now? Like, what? A stan in the purest form. Yeah, it is like, he literally made a song about that. I've been meaning to say this for weeks, because I think people, again, get that misconception that, you know, um, older rap, like, like the fucking legends or whatever, they're untouchable, and especially like us and people on the internet would never say anything bad about them because, you know, they fucking paved the way and all that shit. A few weeks ago... I forget what we ended up reviewing instead, but we at first said that, hey, Ice Cube has a new album out. I was like, oh shit, all right, cool, I'll check it out. Now granted, I haven't listened to an Ice Cube album past his, like, America's stuff in the Most 90s. <laughs> yeah, like, like Lethal Injection, America's Most Wanted, yeah, yeah. Uh, The Predator... Like, sure. Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah, that's a pretty good... Yeah, that, that covers about the margins. Yeah, you don't need War and Peace. And <laughs> no, I skipped all that shit. So, coming on to this album, and again, another misconception I think the fans have, we'll just suck the dick of anyone that says shit about Trump. If it's a fucking liberal, whatever, we're gonna side with him. Ice Cube had an album where basically all he did was critique the administration and politics of the day, and it sucks. It's so fucking boring. Oh, dude, I, I haven't checked it out yet, but this is disappointing. I texted you after four or five tracks, and I was like, dude, I don't want to do it. A, because I just didn't have fun listening to it. Like, I just didn't want to listen to it anymore. And B, it was like, this isn't going to make for a fun review either. Like, right now is basically what I would have said if we would have reviewed it, and that would have been all I had. Because it was so Dull. And for a guy who's been in the game for that long is, I think, what made it extra disappointing. Because it's like, man, you've had time to fucking hone your craft. And this is so base-level, entry-level shit that it was like, well, I'm just wasting my time with this. There is no artist loyalty for me. I like the music that a person makes. I don't like them because I don't know them. They may be known for a certain quality, and, and that's why I go to them, like, and I expect certain things. from Like Kendrick Lamar, yeah, I expect f quality from him, but if he put out a whack album, no, I'm not going to be the fucking, oh, but I got to go along with it because everyone else, yeah, I mean, Kendrick Lamar is kind of like the big, no, that's not how it works here, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, we give you how we honestly feel about it. I feel like we need to make, make that known. Like, I remember Soldier Boy put out a fucking song, uh, a couple of songs that I liked, actually. Remember, I think I told you about it at the time. Speakers going hammer, bammer, bammer, bammer. Right, yeah. And <laughs> Who I can think, forget? I think he had a verse on a song where it was like, uh, or it might have been the same song, where it was like, I'm hotter than a solar flare. Uh, at the same time, I'm colder than a polar bear. And uh, he's like, uh, uh, I see the future on the Oracle. Ask me if I am the best. The question is rhetorical. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, that was pretty good. What the fuck? <laughs> and, and I know the comment section are losing their shit because we haven't talked about Soldier Boy in weeks. And he's Soldier been like, Boy? He's been fucking... <laughs> Uh, everywhere <laughs> it's about like how everyone's ripping him off and i'm pretty sure it's just a gimmick it's just like a fun little thing but drake's ripping me off ariana grande's ripping me off dude like, literally oh, okay. look at how he's dressed whenever he goes to these like <laughs> thing he's literally like he's got a gucci fit headband across his head to be like look see guys i'm still rich i swear I'm pretty sure people are missing the joke. If the whole thing that Soldier Boy is bragging about is that I made uh, uh, promoting yourself on social media pop it, basically, is what he's saying. So what is he doing right now? He's just trying to promote himself some more. But this time, he doesn't have music or a gimmick, so there's no need to pay attention to him. <laughs> All we're getting now, the fucking defendants of Soldier Boy are basically the people popping up in our fucking low B comment section it's like i don't believe you're really a fan i think you're a fan of the gimmick you're a fan of the meme you're not a fan of the music just fucking admit that uh, uh who's that bonk dude there's this dude on like uh uh instagram and his whole thing was that he just pranks people and does really absurd horrible shit like basically the tom green of fucking ah. uh instagram Okay. Like, he'll buy shit and take shit and then just run out instead of, like, 
you know, putting down the money for it. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that guy. Yeah, he made, like, a rap song or two. And then it was just, like, everyone just flipped so quick into just being, like, he, well, I guess he's a rapper now. I guess we got to respect like, <laughs> no, we don't. We don't have to. Like, what? What are you doing? <laughs> I don't remember anyone saying that shit about fucking Logan Paul or fucking Yeah, Jake exactly. Paul. It's like, people are kind of starting to do it with Bad Barbie. Like, Oh, yeah. B- Bahad Barbie. That's yeah, right. It's like, you know, you just not listen to her, right? Like, is, we've got options. Like, <laughs> to say 2009, like, what is... <laughs> is anyone seriously giving fucking bad Barbie credence like any legitimate? You know the whole reason why it's popping. The whole reason why it's just popping is because YouTube is huge with really young kids. You know what I mean? And, and then people are seeing the numbers trend and they're going, yo, I'm trying to get a piece of that bread. So they they, they astroturf off and jump on a verse real quick. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, fine, get your money. But it's just like. Come on, dudes. <laughs> like, why are we doing... I remember it was the same thing happened. I remember it was a couple of years ago when Justin Bieber started trying to do the rap thing. And he rapped over, like, Notorious B.I.G.'s beats or something like that. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, guys, I'm only 14 and I don't know dick about rapping and rapping. <laughs> and, like, dude, so many, like, uh, quote-unquote legends or whatever like jumped on his dick and we're just like oh yeah he's really cool he's doing it it's like he's not gonna give you a verse like he's not gonna give you a feature the one person i remember who did that was fucking raekwon the chef what what are you doing that for what are you doing that for really and and i remember people online were like i think it's just because his kids are fans and he wants to look cool it's like (laughs) fucking raekwon doesn't need to prove shit especially to his fucking kids He's Raekwon. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't, I, 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 like I said, I think it's for a pay. I remember hearing, I, I, the one I think I remember was like Buckshot or something like that. The Back in the days of, uh, you know, S-O-O-H. Anyone remember that website? So.com. The early days of hip hop where you got your news, you know, you what's going on in the hip hop world today. Yeah, yeah. First article, article I saw was like, oh, you know, uh, Justin Bieber freestyles. And I was just like, oh, well, that's stupid. No one's going to like this. And it was like, respected rappers big up it was like Buster Rhymes and all that. I was like what are you guys doing <laughs> like, but I mean and like, like I mean you know Ludacris did the baby joint with them I think it was after that you know or, or no no it, it was before that never mind <sighs> I, I think on, on one side of it maybe it is just a sort of like hey let everyone be a part of the culture but on another side of it I'm just like like what like, look, I would understand if it was like, you know, I I don't want to say I'm against the idea of like, you know, a child star being really good, but man, he wasn't that good. <laughs> like, even with the hi- like, even when you turn all the admittedly overhyped Justin Bieber hate, like most people were probably hating on him because they were 14 and they got the internet for the first time. And you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like little phenomenons like that are the reason why shit like that was happening. I, I feel like we don't account for how young a lot of this shit skews, you know? Oh, yeah. Fucking I- trolls and haters definitely attributed to that. <clears throat> the music wasn't nearly as bad as you remember. It. Fucking go back. It's not great. But, but holy shit. It, he didn't deserve half the shit he got. He didn't deserve half the shit he got, but... I'd be lying if I said he deserved the, the fucking uh, the accolade. I was just going to say, he doesn't deserve the riches and fame either. Yeah, though, yeah. exactly. I, I think it had a big, I think Usher. I think that's really what it was. Was a big part of it. And people were like, well, I'm friends with Usher. I'm going to give his fucking Oh, I never thought. It. Yo, the, the puzzle has been revealed. I get it. All right, no, I'm not even mad anymore. You, you know what it was? You see the sailboat now. Hey, your boy, your boy Usher hollered at a couple dudes like, "Hey man, you know we're trying to make this money. Go a little, go a little easy on the boy." <laughs> and now that feature uh, from Ludacris actually makes 100 percent more sense now. Like in a mainstream context, Justin Bieber, you want to get him with a rap group? Well, wouldn't you want to go with someone like Super Safe, like Black Eyed Peas or some shit? Well, eventually, fucking Will I Am did have Justin Bieber on his album. Oh, oh I'm alive! I'm alive! I'm alive! <laughs> Dude, I, I I gotta just get back to the mediocrity. Oh right, with this <laughs> album. Yo, criminal! What was that beat, bro? It, it almost sounded country. Like I wasn't sure what was happening. Like, you know, five for fighting. That's what it fucking sounded like. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you get it right? Holy shit! <laughs> And I'm like, what the fuck is this Matchbox 20 shit doing on here? 
That's a name I haven't heard in years. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's 2008, 2000. So maybe that was like still, uh, you know, that was about on its way. That was about where mainstream rock was sounding at that time, maybe. It's fucking The Script. Yeah. Does anyone remember The Script? You know, I, like that. I think uh, uh, Hey There Delilah wasn't too far away. You know what Plain I mean? Plain White Tees. Yeah. But then Saigon, he had a fucking verse. <laughs> Like, that shit was actually really dope. He said, put emphasis on, on hitting my nemesis in high percentages. Crooked-ass cops is the reason for my belligerence. And it gets deeper than that. There were nights I used to sleep with the gat with a package of crack into my sneaker strap. Uh, uh, D's sneak attack. Arraigned me. It took weeks for that. Beat the rap. But you're saying, look, oh, he think he the Mac. Fuck y'all. <laughs> like, I, I love, like, yo. Oh, and then I, the lyric right afterwards where he says, uh, niggas who think they might try us, watch us incite riots flip cars and light fires like oh i'm telling you man there are moments yeah this album definitely. is fucking monty python and the meaning of life ha, there look are... we brought it back around unwritten i wanted to bring that up what the fuck was going on fuck that song dude that might be the worst song on the album you got mercedes martinez who i feel like we may have talked about her before does she fit on this song no it felt like someone was like, well, we got to put something that's catchy on this shit. <laughs> we can't just have like 35 seconds of a song that goes silent like halfway through and then that just be the song. We got to have something else on it. it. It's way too fucking short. And you got this guest vocalist who I, I, I didn't care for her generic ass voice. It just sounded like what the fuck ever. Um, I'm double checking. Is that my lowest rated song on the album? It's that and Rising Down. Are the two songs I didn't like the most. Mainly because uh, Rising Down was so fucking dull as a first track. Yeah, uh, 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 do you remember the hello, 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 hello? I don't what the like hell? that. Why did they do it so much? <laughs> I know. Like, it's one of those ideas that seems like, hello, oh, hello. really quick. Like, <laughs> hello, hello. Like, that's a good, like, start at the beginning. You know, you hear that little, oh, what was Maybe. that weird little vocal sample there? Then it kept happening, and you're just like, Oh, I couldn't even tell what the hell they were saying until I looked it up on Genius. <laughs> I was like, they're saying huddle? <laughs> hello? They're supposed to be saying hello? Why? Why are they saying it so much? Yeah. You have Becoming Unwritten, which happens like six tracks before Unwritten. And it's just like instrumental for a couple of seconds. And then it just says like the last four lines of the unwritten song but you haven't heard it yet so you don't know what those words are or what they mean it should have been maybe like a reprise after the song yeah hook didn't fit song felt like even for a short song which is purposely trying to be short it felt unfinished like yeah the, uh, i was looking up about it they said uh, oh it, it's about how it's it, it, it's about supposed to be about his own mortality and how do you had a dream about it but the thing about it is it doesn't work because it doesn't give us enough clear details for no. us to even be like, ooh, where is this going? Oh, no, it stopped. Like, it barely gives us anything. It just starts off with like, yo, it was a cold night. Not cold like the winter, just cold like the energy was in the air. Now, I was on board, right? I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, oh, yeah, so now we're, we're automatically thinking about something beyond just like the physical representation, right? And then it was just like, I generally don't like, then the driver had to dip, so he left me in the whip, turned around and said, you know you're on your own, right? And then just pause. Really uncomfortable long pause. The driver had to dip, so he left me in the whip, turned around, said, you know you want your own, right? Yeah, but that it? Well, you guys, oh, there you go. I didn't even know he was in a car. He said it was a cold night. I thought he was outside, but I guess he's in a car now. And there's a driver that's leaving, but I didn't even know that there was a driver. The details are just so scuzzy. And then to do the sort of, oops, we paused. It was just like, I don't even know where we are. So, because when it picks back up, he's talking about like, you know, there's pictures on the wall of my life, like a drive-in, only it's live. And it's a montage of the places I've been. You get that imagery and, and, and you're starting to get a picture, right? You're like, oh, okay. So he's in like, maybe like a limousine of like moving pictures. Of that. That's 
kind of, well, where's that going? And then the suspense had my heart racing, throbbing, just like a young punk with a tape revolver pointed at the driver of a car face to rob him. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa driver of the car, what, you feel it? Okay, wait, no, 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 that, that imagery is completely not uh, related to the story. He's saying his heart is racing like a dude who's getting a gun pointed at his face. But now we have these two images of a line in this barely 16 bar verse where that wasn't related to anything. That didn't actually help us tell the story. And it's like, the cigarettes chase the vibe. The nigga just chased the dream, but won't chase the monster. What won't chase the monster? What? The son won't face the father, huh? What? The gun won't erase the drama. Why you wait till my time's up? And and, what? and I wasn't looking at Spotify, right? So you got that pause halfway through the song. Yeah. <laughs> and then then the song thing. I didn't know that Lost Desire was a different song. I thought it was the same song. I was like, no way could that have been it. And then I looked and I saw that like, Oh, this is only 10 seconds in? You mean that other song's over? <laughs> yeah. That's it, huh? With a fucking intro track like the Pow Wow and a fucking album cover like this, yeah. this album is so uninteresting. Like, man, the fucking gift wrapping is like, wow, this is going to be so cool and interesting. It's going to have so many things to say. Nah, not really. At the end of it, my favorite song was the song that was trying the least and it was the fucking last one the song that's like oh. the fucking upbeat pop song fucking the rising up that was the go-go song yeah and that one was fucking sick i loved that it was like fun and poppy like, and uh who is that uh, wale was on it i'm not gonna lie though like i still kind of didn't enjoy the song because it's just like it felt like rapidy rap Black Thought trying to do a pop song, like a pop fun rap song, but he's still doing rapidy rap. You know, he's still got like the, uh, but yeah. I'm still the dude. Got the, and he's not like having fun with it in a way that's like, this is a party rap song. Like you can still be a lyrical dude and be party I rap. I see what you mean. You know what yeah, I mean? N- now's not the time for it. Yeah, it, it just like what he was saying didn't feel like it fit with a girl shake your asses and we're going to have a good time, you know? And what was with all the mentions of John Travolta? I can't remember that. (laughs) It was like the chorus was like, we're making money like John Travolta. They drop his name twice in the chorus. So in total, you hear John Travolta's name like eight times in the song. And it's like, what's the obsession with John Travolta? Oh, Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Was John Travolta the dude in 2008? (laughs) The fucking highest earning <laughs> movie star of 2008? And then, and John then, Travolta? And then it was just like, even the chorus was like, yesterday I saw a B-girl cry and I walked up and asked what's wrong. She told me the radio's been playing the same song all day long. So Is I, this the roots? It, what the fuck? Yeah, it's man. just so like... All right, if we're are we doing like the the sort of like you know the mythologizing old school hip hop like oh there was girls there was a poor little b girl sitting on the stoop you know <laughs> I never thought I'd say this but this is a song better suited for like black eyed peas that's exactly it because it, it's simpler made this shit and it's work. Fu- yeah they would have had the energy required for what this song's trying to do. Because, you know, those lyrics aren't necessarily bad. It's just that it's on a Roots song where Roots are, like, a lot more lyrical guys. So it's just they handle it in a way that that still feels like they're trying to be, but we're still respected rappers, you guys. (laughs) You know? (laughs) So what you got for your request this week? So this one was requested by John Speciale. And he requested The Sun's Tirade by Isaiah Rashad. And bro, uh, the sun's tirade. I wonder about this th- this album title. Is it called that because he's just like I hate that the sun makes me get up and have to do stuff. <laughs> I just want to be half asleep for all of these recordings. Okay, look, um, I'm gonna say yeah. Uh, he he took his sweet time waking up. Um, oh my god, I've never heard three, an album so slow! <laughs> it took till he got to the song with Kendrick to actually sound uh, like he was fucking awake. The this first oh, three tracks. Oh, loop, oh, loop, oh, loop, oh, loop, oh, loop, head ass. Speed these fucking songs up! <laughs> Dude, he's fucking stalling for time by slowing down the songs. That's what he's fucking doing. He's like, we're like, well, th- oh shit, I only have 30 minutes worth of material. 
Wait, if I slow the BPMs down... <laughs> I can fucking drag it out to over an hour. <laughs> Why would anyone want that? No, um... See, again, with The Roots, uh, this album had its moments. But if I had to review the album in ten words or less, <laughs> I'd say it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> How... Did I review two generally different albums and come out with essentially the exact same score? <laughs> like, to How the percentage? <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Another goddamn three. On top, dog? How? <laughs> Look, how do you have an album with Kendrick and SZA and J-Rock and still come out with a three? And by the way, speaking of features, we didn't even mention... That that last album had guest verses from Talib Kweli and Common, and even they were both okay. Yeah, and, and fucking most deaf. <laughs> like no the fucking... one was bringing the energy. No one's bringing yeah. the fire. <laughs> Black Thought had to carry all that shit in his goddamn back. It's not fair. Oh, oh the intro. D did you find it kind of funny that it was like kind of the opposite of what the last album was? Oh yeah. See, I will say though. I will say absolutely. I did really like the uh the, the underlining narrative and the skits mm. on this album i thought it added to it but again it didn't really reflect in the songs yeah which was kind of annoying so what you got here is the co-founder of the top dog label and he's calling up uh Isaiah and he's like hey man i've been waiting on this fucking album for months what the fuck and apparently that was kind of a thing, because uh, he was really bad on Xanax and alcohol, and he was fucking his life up to the yeah. point where he was almost kicked off the label multiple times. So they fucking sent him home, fucking get your shit together, come back, and fucking make this goddamn album. Because he made another album that was apparently very well received. I hadn't heard it. No, Sylvia Demo, yeah. So the expectations were very high on this kid. So everyone was like, we, we're fucking waiting on that album. Waiting on that album. So throughout the album, there are these phone calls from the co-founder of Top Dog. And he's just kind of giving him shit. And it's funny because, like, it reminds me of the MC, the MC Chris skits. Because that also was MC Chris talking to, like, his manager or the guy at the label. And he's giving him well, all this criticism. Like what it reminds me of is, like, other albums I've heard from people that made albums that weren't that great. Mm. But, like, like because I, I, the, the two that I immediately think of are um, Praz and oh. Method Man. They both had albums around, like, it was 98, 99 or something like that. Mm. And, like, throughout the album, it's like, where's Method Man? And, oh, we're going to help you work on the album, and it's going to be great. It's like, anytime anyone is talking about, why aren't you making the album? And, oh, the album's going to be great. It's just like, uh, I'm <laughs> listening to the album. I get it. You're being ironic. But I'm actually fucking listening to it. Because you just play the fucking album. They started out real. It was like, wow, this is some real talk. Where's yeah, the yeah. fucking album? You gotta get it done. And it's like, okay, cool. That sounded genuine. Later, though, where there's just a skit where it's like, look, dog, I'm looking on your Wikipedia, and it says you were born in 1991? That's, that's creepy, dog. <laughs> that fucking had me laughing, though. It was like, the fucking, you're talking all this nasty shit, all this shit you're doing with these girls. These girls you're talking to were born in 1994. That's fucking creepy, dog. <laughs> it's like he doesn't understand that it's like, well, it's not creepy to him. He was born in 91. And then there was another one where he's like, man, just fucking pick a topic. Just fucking complicated ass. Just pick a topic and rap about that. You know what's actually really funny? I uh, wrote down on one of these songs, uh, one of the later ones where I was like, it feels like he meanders a lot. Feels like there's no real topics. And it was literally two songs later. It was like, yo, bro, you need to pick a topic. I was like, oh, my God. I'm not Whoa. doing this on purpose. <laughs> Goddamn, read your brain retroactively. It was like, okay, but commenting on it doesn't make it. Now I'm just mad because I know that you know that it's, you know what I mean? And here's the thing. He ends the album with a song called Find a Topic, and it doesn't really address the, the skit at all. Yeah, and oh, and the way the fucking chorus goes, again, when I got to this point, uh, no, I, well, actually it was earlier, there were a couple of times where I wanted to stop listening, but 
uh, where he says, yeah, you my favorite topic. Yeah, money, fucking love it. Yeah, you my favorite topic. You, buddy. <laughs> like, his courses, like, I can't do them exactly because the wording is so spaced out. It's just like, money, fucking love it. It's just like, he, he's, I swear to God, he spaces out every fucking thing. There's a couple of times where it's like, you know how uh, I'm about to say a couple of lyrics that are going to relate directly to the chorus. So I'm stopping right here to 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 go back to the car. You know what I mean? Yeah. But with him, it was just like he, he either stopped too early or like I said, the beat was too slow. And so it would just be like, there's just so much dead air of just like, what? His attitude works on a couple of tracks there was one in particular uh stuck in the mud it's kind of split into two parts it switches after three minutes and it basically turns into like a whole oh song. no yeah i love the first part of that track that's what it was <laughs> the first half is great uh, the yeah. second half not so much as i was listening to this album i would find songs where it would just be like this is the song that i would probably hear somewhere out in the wild that would make me go oh i should check out this guy's album like let me hear what his vibe is like and then it's like oh it's, it, it's the whole album's just this you know like i i don't remember noting it an upbeat track until like track 11 or some shit well no i i'll say fucking uh what's wrong the song with kendrick okay all right no you're I right i loved right. I loved the. It had like a funky '70s type mm-hmm. vibe, and Kendrick was bringing the fire. I thought his verse was really good. I loved how there was a point where it sounded like he was about to go into "I'm going into angry rapper mode," and then he stopped, and it was just like, "Oh, oh." Any nigga that disagrees is a fucking lie. You know what I thought was funny about Isaiah's verse on "What's Wrong" was that. Okay, so I got Kendrick on the song, so I gotta do that thing Kendrick does where he'll rap until he's almost out of breath. This album feels kind of lazy. Like, <laughs> And it sucks because the beats are so yes. good. The production is so good. Except for my lowest rated song on the album. Fucking a lot produced by Mike Will made it. <laughs> where it's just a low-key mumbling what the fuck ever couldn't be asked like god Dude. damn you could keep the fuck out of a lot song sucks remember silk the shaka <laughs> yeah what the fuck what the fuck what was that what the fuck the weird thing is i actually ended up liking that song <laughs> i i thought his verses flowed really well yeah um I really like the chilled out beat. It was kind of. It sounds spacey. like it should have been on like a movie soundtrack or something. Yeah, you know? but then it's like it's supposed to be a love song, but yeah, he's like, it more or less talking about drugs. So is it one of those? It's a love song, but it's about drugs. Like I'm so over those songs. But it's called Silk the Shocker. Like, what? Yeah, man. <laughs> like Silk the Shocker. That's not a sexy title. <laughs> like, you know? Like, <laughs> you're telling me you're not fucking turned on by the thought of no limit rappers from the 90s? It's like, yeah, it's like when uh, Black or Six Lack named a song after Stan. It's like, do you guys know what these songs are about? <laughs> oh my god, that's right. I'm a stand for you. Like, yeah, no, I'm a stand for you, it's baby. It's not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and he doesn't seem to be saying it with any sense of self awareness. So you're like, no, wait, he, what's he missed going the on entire here? Point. Yeah, and then th- these fucking song titles, "Titty" and "Dala." I think what it was supposed to be is an homage to "Titty Boy" and "Dala," uh, the, the dudes from Players Circle. Were they impactful, important to your life? Was was Duffel Bag Boy and? literally no other song they did really important to your life like i don't know man like maybe maybe i don't get it maybe the the, the uh, you know two chains walked away from um um a fucking clips level type of fucking you know uh deal and i just wasn't hip to it but i don't remember playing circle being that big of a fucking deal so like what the fuck are you doing in a body it's like you're on the fucking top dog label dude like what <laughs> you know like what's going on right now what the fuck is really going on i did like the whistling that they added on here that yeah. Yes. Like, literally, when that came in, as I was thinking of how stupid the title was, it was just like, oh, but I should forgive it because, no, this is still really stupid, though. It's called Titty and Dollar. The name of the song is Titty and Dollar. Like, that's a stupid song title. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I really like the slick whistling in 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 the background. It's I thought fucking the lyrics awesome. were so lame though. Fucking J Rock and Hugh Augustine though, they fucking outshine Rashad easy. I thought J Rock had the best verse in the song, but then when I thought about it and really looked back to like find like a quotable, I couldn't really find something that was it's like still oh, not man. that good. No. Yeah, and I and but then I thought it's like I think it's literally just because he has energy. He brings yeah. actual energy to the fucking track. And that's the only reason I thought the verse was as good as it was when I heard the first time. I was just like, oh, hey, someone sounds awake. <laughs> you know? Like, dude, there are so many times on this album where he, it, like, he'll start off a track with just like, yeah, 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 it's me. I'm like, dude, every track, though, every track you have to sound like you're just waking up like oh my god it gets old and like on b-day i get that he's like supposed to be drunk and that's the point but it still doesn't excuse like when you've already heard like eight other songs with the yeah, same are you delivery supposed to be drunk on all those songs yeah um i did like though that the beats had like these weird like wind chime sounds i thought that was pretty cool i thought i again the beats, I can't say enough about the beats. I thought the beats were great. I really like I really like the production, but man, oh man, it's just wasted. And I think like every now and then, you know, I remember first listening to at least like the first half of it. It he felt kind of charming. The lackadaisical nature of the sort of like delivery at first was kind of like, oh, you know, sort of a slick rick vibe, you know. It began to sound like mumble rap, but like for the cool, uh, more distinguished uh, older rap fan, you know, he he's 15. He grew out of Lil Yachty. Now he's into, you know, this guy. He he talks about his problems sometimes, you know. I mean, he's still, like, basically mumbling and can barely keep a song topic together. But, like, you know, he, you can actually hear that he's actually talking about real shit. You know, it's just not very good at organizing it, you know. On Free Lunch, I really liked the chorus. That meal ticket, meal ticket. It was, like, fucking catchy. I thought that was pretty cool. B day where he says, "I might just pull my drink because sometimes it be talking to a nigga." Yeah, sometimes I be talking back. <laughs> like the way he says it, just like I mean, you know, <laughs> no one else is around who's gonna judge me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like little moments like that. You know, when you hear a little bit of his personality shine through. This is the part where I fucking checked out. So track eleven, a lot rated zero, by the way. Um, first verse. He, you know, you hear the intro where he says, you know, the rappers do the thing where they rap part of the the first verse, like, oh, oh, it's just a uh, check in for the sound. Now I'm about to really go in, you know, and it's like he just goes like, yeah, I just watch your bitch, I, uh, yeah, 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 I just watch your bitch. I don't want no fucking problem. And it's just like, okay, so that was the intro, and I didn't know if that was gonna be the first line, and now it officially is. So I just heard that twice. You know what I mean? And then you get to the, uh, what I think it was dressed like rappers. Not even tr- two tracks later, the first line is, "I got a face that only your bitch could love." It's like, oh fucking right, I get it. You're gonna fuck my bitch. Jesus <laughs> just fucking get Christ. it over with and do it already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like. It, it's just the fact that it's like two songs so close to each other that both started basically the same. BT dubs, I'm fucking your bitch specifically. It's just like, oh my fucking God. Do you think this is interesting? Like, do you listen to your own music? Do you enjoy this? Do you enjoy listening to you saying to yourself, I just fucked your bitch? I just want to say that question. You know what I mean? Like, is that fun for you? <laughs> two tracks in a row, AA. Okay, so it's a song about substance abuse, but he's not going to go into detail about it. Not really, yeah. Followed up with Dressed as Rappers. Ooh, dope topic, right? Where he talks about how rap is being glamorized and how kids are trying to dress like rappers now. Oh, wow. He doesn't go into detail. Not nearly enough. <laughs> yeah, like I said, he starts the verse with, I got a face only your bitch could love. That was not any so- no. sort of social commentary. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> However, I will say, Back to Back, Don't Matter, and Brenda are probably the two best songs on the album. The late stage, better tracks. Oh boy. Don't Matter, you got that awesome fucking beat in the drums. Lance Skiwalker kind of kills the flow. I wasn't a big fan of him. But I thought Rashad did fine. I liked the... I don't really get it, but it sounded cool. The, alright, pimps, 
hose, fingertips, masturbate, yeah. all right, pimps, hose. Like, he just sounded like he was having fun because he was, like, laughing and it sounded cool. I was but like, I, was I don't really to get out, it. Yeah, I was like, how does this relate? Like, I know these all things involve sex. It don't but, matter. That's like, exactly it. It don't matter. Of pimps when you mast Like, what's going on? <laughs> but then you get to Brenda where I was almost certain he was going to fucking do it. Do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, it's about his grandmother named Brenda and all the things <laughs> she told him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's kind of neat. Kind of sweet. Then he just follows it up with by George outro. And then the not an outro find a topic. <laughs> and both of them are like, what the fuck ever? Neither yeah. of these needed to be here. It didn't need to be an hour. Again, going in, remember when I texted you yesterday on Tuesday and was like, hey, can, uh, can we record on Wednesday? I'm going to need more times with these albums. This album is why. <laughs> I just didn't want to listen to it, man. I was fucking <laughs> bored. I was like, oh, man, we're going to have to talk about this shit later today. I'm not even, haven't even finished this shit. I just need, like, another day with it so I can actually take the time. I need a mental health day for the fucking bullshit. <laughs> and, like, it's not the worst, but for a fucking hour, man, this shit was too dull. I remember Todd made a very good point. The worst thing that a, a critic can call you isn't annoying, it's, it's boring. boring. Yeah, because yeah. that means there's no reason to listen to you. Sometimes we review albums that are, like, so bad, it's, like, funny to yeah. talk about. Or, like, man, I can't wait to gush about this album because it was such a fun listen. This one, it's like, what the hell do I have to say about this? <laughs> Not really much of anything. It's the reverse of the fucking Roots album, where all the features were like, meh. On this album, like, the features were the only thing worth a shit. Yeah, the only the features injected in the into the album. It's an hour's worth of what sounds like fucking 21 Savage just recently dethawed from the ice or something like that. You know, and he's he, his jaw's still kind of like closed, so he's still ripping like this. You know, and, and, and you know he's they, they got to put him on something, so he's still kind of sedated, but they still got to finish this rap album. So, uh, <laughs> you know, was that a play on Ice? Oh his, shit! Because ah. his bullshit <laughs> deportation, free twenty one. By the way, I should have fucking led with the. I should have led the show with that, but free twenty one. Free twenty one. Fuck's sake, man. Yeah, bro. Um, but as, as previously mentioned, uh, three for me. I I, give, I it? give it a two. Two. Honestly. Yeah. All right, I was, a I was really thinking about it. I'm like, but I don't want to li like. It's not even that I because I, I could see coming across a track and being like, oh yeah, that one or two tracks I like. But like, as soon as you listen to more than one, it's all more of the same. And what's the point? As soon as you said you gave a lot a zero, I was like, oh, okay, I gave that shit a two. I guess we, <laughs> I guess you might have a little bit of a lower rating. So we reviewed two Patreon-requested albums this week, and if you think that sounds really cool and there's an album that you would like to hear us talk about, it's as simple. It's fucking simple. Head on over to Patreon if it's still there, at <laughs> patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse. Uh, check our pages for details uh, to see how you can request an album to be reviewed on the show. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Check out our merch on Teespring. Check out RC on Station Head. Hey. Uh, if this is your first time listening to us, all the old episodes are on SoundCloud, iTunes, and most of them are on YouTube. I think some got taken down for copyright, but that's most of the older ones. Yeah. And I'm just going to go ahead and say you're not really missing out because those early episodes are kind of rough listens. The, 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 <laughs> you, it really is like, uh, well, it's the uh, the going off cinematic universe. You know, it's like you don't necessarily need to join in. for. You don't need to go all the way back to the first comics. You know, you join in wherever you want, you know. If you want to get into the X-Men, you don't need to start. With the fucking, the very first run, where they're all wearing the really lame white and blue jumpsuits. And no, one no, no. dude just has wings. Like, your power is that you just have wings. You can jump in at Uncanny X-Men. That's fine. Or The Astonishing. <laughs> you don't need to start with the original run. That's fine. You're not missing out on anything. You can jump in when we start calling ourselves gonads. <laughs> oh, that's right. When you notice the run times get a little bit shorter. <laughs> You know, when I decided to start cutting things out, because 
the first couple episodes, yeah, it's just the entire goddamn Skype call with nothing cut out. What the this fuck was the I second. doing? Yeah. It's like almost three goddamn hours, and it's just so much. Um, so, uh, was there anything else you wanted to, uh, uh, dude, I saw someone recently be like, hey, man, I just, I just listened to all of the episodes. I'm all caught up. It's like, wow, man, like, <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> you have the process. <laughs> you fucking saw how I learned audio editing as we went. In real time. <laughs> oh, my God. When I was just setting a camera on my desk and using the audio captured from it because I didn't have an extra external microphone. Dude, okay. For the longest time, I didn't know that was important. I was, I just, <laughs> look, I got a camera. What? I'm with the big boys now. What's, what's going on? The camera records audio. Why need another <laughs> microphone? The microphone on the camera is obviously good enough. <laughs> or else, Holy why shit. else would they put the microphone on the camera? <laughs> Why else would they equip it with one? Ooh, if it didn't they sound to amazing. People off? I, 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 I don't buy it. <laughs> oh boy, but yeah. Um we're closing in on that big 200. And uh yeah, if you want to start with like maybe episode 100 on maybe yeah. as you know rule what? That's good. I think you know, I think as a show uh, a show like ours gets better and better as we get to the the 100 point like that's the point where you start watching our content again you know what i mean yeah. like like now that we're at 200 all right yeah probably the last 100 are probably good then when we get to 300 yeah the, the, those 100 are probably shit compared to like the last 100 that we did you know what i mean <laughs> And hopefully, by the time we get to episode 300, it's not like the 300th episode of The Simpsons with <laughs> fucking bullshit Tony Hawk and Blink-182. I oh, can't get no. over it! That episode we, sucked! We start start bringing guests on just to kick, k- kiss their ass. What are you doing on the Going Off podcast? Oh, <laughs> oh John Travolta, what are you doing on the Going Off podcast? <laughs> this is completely relevant to what we're doing on this show right now. How much money are you making, John Travolta? I heard fucking, I heard we the d- roots were talking all about you. Oh, what's that you say? You were in the fucking John Gotti movie that was voted like the worst movie of the year. We can talk about something else. It's okay. <laughs> but uh, until next time for the Going Off podcast, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic. And I think we should say it again. Fucking free 21 Savage, goddammit. I interface in my database, my database is in cyberspace, so I'm interactive, I'm hyperactive, and from time to time I'm radioactive.